My husband said, you're not wearing that, are you? <laughs> um, right. Oh. Right, OK, the wind of change. Now, um, I'm really excited to be here and, and sort of <coughs> sick with nerves as well. And I have had quite a large beetroot juice before. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a good idea. <laughs> but, um, I'm so excited to be part of the Pettigrew family, if you like, and part of the Twitter family as well, because I think it's so awesome that we can all come here today for the same purpose. And I've had a couple of conversations today already, and you're sort of talking to family, maybe, or colleagues, and you're sort of saying, on a Saturday, yes, I am coming on a Saturday, <laughs> yes. No, it, no, it's free. No, there are other teachers, yes, there are other teachers there. Yes, it's their Saturday as well. <laughs> so, and it's, it's sort of lovely that everybody's giving up all this, um, all their free time to come and um, share things, really. And I think it's a really exciting time to be a teacher, funnily enough, because I think there are a lot of things that are changing, and I think those of us that have been blogging and tweeting a lot in the last two or three weeks, even, since half term, I'd say February half term, are finding quite a lot to be excited about in the way that we are being judged, perhaps. Um, we could be very, very grateful to, to people that are in the room, Tom included, and uh, Tom Bennett, and um, I'm going to forget them all, David, where is he? Learning Spy. Perhaps he's undercover. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, who are being invited to um, really quite big meetings about the things that we're blogging about and the things that we're interested in. So I was thinking, actually, it's really exciting, isn't it, um, to, to be part of something that's actually quite a big change. Except things aren't actually changing as much as maybe we'd like to think they are. Because... <laughs> Lots and lots of things happened at uh, February half term, and I was so excited. And I emailed my line manager, who's a deputy head, and he's also an Ofsted inspector. And the idea about lessons not being graded um, by Ofsted, he said, "Yeah, yeah, that's that's old news." And I said, "Well, why doesn't it happen then?" He said, "I've no idea." He said, "They're all at the same meetings that I go to." He said, "I, you know," and I said, "But you grade when you go on lesson observation, but you know, when you go on Ofsted inspections." He went, yeah, because they ask us to. And I said, well, you shouldn't be doing that then, should you? And he said, no, you're right, I shouldn't be doing it. And so he's really sort of started to think about that. And our head, who is also an Austin inspector, I said, look, there are people that aren't grading anymore at schools, and I think maybe we should do that. He said, well, they're wrong then, aren't they? And I said, no, they're not wrong, Neil. <laughs> um, maybe you can have a think about that. He said, no, no, I don't think I will. So I thought, right, with him, it's, he's, a, he's a good bloke, but it's a softly, softly, catchy monkey, I think, with, with some approaches. So I was thinking, well, how do we get that in, in schools as well? Because I was thinking about us in the Twitter world and how lucky we are, and we have lots of networking, and we, we support one another, and, and it feels very empowering. And then sometimes I go back to school and I'll say things to some colleagues, and they make me realise that actually... Twitter's really tiny compared to <laughs> what else is going on in school. And I sometimes think that some of my leadership team who are really probably quite sick of me emailing them all the time, look at this blog, it's brilliant, look at this. And I think they think I have this mad and visible friend. <laughs> it's all on Twitter, it's all on Twitter. And, and sort of, that's lovely, but they see it as like this little speck here. And what I think February did was actually say, Ofsted agree, and this is the blog that says that Ofsted agree, and here's Tom's blog, I mean, my head teacher, he absolutely thinks that you're wonderful, Tom, he really does, because he sees nearly everything you write, because I keep saying, Neil, look at this, look at this, why can't you be more like this? <laughs> <laughs> um, he's not that but I also think that some of us are very lucky, because Neil at least will listen, my head teacher is, is a very good head teacher, he will listen, even if he thinks I'm wrong, he will listen, and then things sort of gradually start occurring to him when he sees things in practice, and I think that's the same with a lot of us. Concepts are quite difficult for us to get hold of, and the concept about not grading lessons is massive. So I think we have to see things um, sort of happening quite gradually, because I think, I think some SLTs, maybe, it might feel like this for you, um, <laughs> your SLTs will carry on their own sweet way, perhaps, and the things that happen for us and that are important for us don't seem to be happening for them. 
We ran a course uh, recently um, at school and uh, invited some colleagues from other schools in talking about outstanding teaching. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, talking about uh, you know, outstanding teaching, what it used to be and how things have changed. And we did a sort of um, a lesson observation and then we asked Alan, who's a, a Met Austin inspector, can you grade that? And he, he was brilliant. He role played. No, I'm not going to because we don't have enough um, we don't have enough evidence, I'm afraid. And the, all the all the candidate, all the delegates of the they said, Really? We can actually do that now. Yes, you can. And one one delegate said, This is amazing. Oh my my head is just blown apart. And I said, What are you going what are you gonna tell your SLT? Oh no, they won't listen. <laughs> no, they're just they'll, they'll, just, they'll just carry on their own sweet way and they'll still grade. So I think that's a real problem for us. We have to try to um, sort of persuade teachers that yes possibly you might want to grade your teacher your SLTs might want to grade their teachers but you can't use that framework anymore you can't use the Ofsted framework for good and outstanding and whatever the other two are um, because that that's for whole that's for learning over time isn't it that that's for an accumulation of a lot of evidence so I was thinking Sometimes, do you recognise this chap? <laughs> there are tough young teachers, he doesn't look particularly enthusiastic about going to teaching. And I just thought about training teachers and what we're telling the next generation of teachers here. They're getting a lot of mixed messages at the moment. And um, I was talking to a colleague who is mentoring um, a trainee who's having a bit of a rough time at the moment and she's sort of feeling a bit like this. Um, and I said, uh, I said, let's let's go easy on her. Let's, you know, she's had a half term to think about things. Let's try and sort of say not go in too negatively because, she, she, you know, she kind of thinks she might be being a bit negative with her. And this colleague of mine said, Yeah, I was negative with her because I said to her, This is a negative profession. Get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I thought, why do people, you know, because I laugh every single day of my working life, I'm sure you do too. The time spent in the classroom actually can't be negative. They're not the, the things that are making us negative, it's the, it's the outside things. And I was thinking, it ties in actually what Helene was saying. All these things that we hear <coughs> colleagues talking about, no time to collaborate and plan together. Walkthroughs that actually just come through for 10 minutes and then give a grading. Um, book trawls that actually you feel as if you're giving work in to be marked as well and, and you're having to um, keep up with excessive marking policies that don't actually make sense for your um, for your own department that might be a whole school policy and we're all doing that but what works for science may not work for English and it may not work for DT but yet some people are being made to do that by their SLTs um, and obviously don't get me started on graded individual lessons um, so what I was thinking was little, obviously that's what you might be thinking, but I'm, I'm being a bit facetious here because I know that it actually is a really serious thing for some colleagues, that they're feeling really sort of pressured and downtrodden and it's a real effort to actually go in and, and teach those young, um, those young people and, and keep, keep your chin up sometimes when you feel as if there's not a supportive system around you. Um, so my, my mantra, I've decided that I'm, I'm going to start thinking, well, if there's a problem, there must be a way to get around it. There must be a way over this wall. So I don't mean in a sort of, in a horrible way, get over it. It's actually, that is a problem, so how can we get through it? If our SLTs aren't going to be very supportive, what can you do in your own, um, in your own sphere, in your own sort of department, perhaps <coughs> even just yourself, what could you do to empower yourself and to learn from other people? So, there's a couple of things that I think you can do. I think joining forces with like-minded colleagues is a great idea, and I think Twitter actually does that. So you feel as if you're not the only one in the same boat. And I know people like Cassie Pop, who've been following her story, she has been so awesome in challenging what is a completely bonkers regime at her school and keep going back to them. She doesn't care now what they think of her. She just keeps going back and saying, this doesn't work for me. It, this doesn't actually tally up with common sense. And I think that's so brave to go in, in the face of um, a whole team of people saying, well, yes, that is what we're doing at this school and you're going against what the school wants. Um, I think teach meets can be absolutely amazing. But I think if your school isn't organising one, then maybe you could 
I mean, even in Worcestershire, even in Worcestershire, <laughs> there is a teach meet on its way with more than one school. And it's like, yes. Somebody um, contacted me the other day. Admittedly, they've just moved into Worcestershire, so they don't know what it's like. <laughs> Let's have a teach meet. Um, but I, I, you know, I think that would be awesome. That would be absolutely fantastic. And it's getting people off their backsides and perhaps into other, uh, into other departments and in, uh, into other schools. Have an intern, that all sounds a bit painful, but have an internal teach me. Because even if you just say, you know, it's an extra little meeting, um, let's all get together and talk about something that we've done recently um, that has worked well with uh, behaviour management. Let's all, let's all have a go at that. And that is actually very empowering. And the most um, surprising people came to our last internal teach me. Um, and the head was very supportive of that and did say, you know, I'll lay on some sandwiches then to sort of lure people into the classroom. But it worked and it was, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm going to be talking a bit later, and so is Anne, about lesson study, because I've, I've felt that lesson study really has been a gift for lesson observations. And in its purest, purest thought form, it's watching the students, not the teacher. Watching how the students react and how they learn in a lesson, and not the teacher. It's not about the teacher's performance. And then having a conversation with that teacher afterwards about those students. It's so non-threatening. And there are all sorts of spheres to lesson study, so I definitely recommend it, and that can start very small scale. The walkthroughs that Helene talked about, um, which could just be done in two, so you could just go into a colleague's um, lesson when you're free, and another colleague, and you could just walk through for 10 minutes, I've, I've written about it, and it's not judged, and it's not graded, it's just talking about what you feel and what you see when you're in there. Um, and I was quite sceptical about these types of lesson observations to start with these walkthroughs, but they've been incredibly powerful in, in work I've done at my own school and then in outreach work I've done. Um, and if nobody wants to listen to the ideas that you've got, do them small scale and find something that has impact and then you can present that back to your SLT. There are, can't be many people that wouldn't act on actual evidence in front of them. We've been trying lesson study, we've been looking at these particular students that are underachieving. <coughs> Look what we've noticed when we've tweaked teaching over a half a term. Nobody, surely, is going to be able to say no to that. But the biggest thing I think that you can do at the moment, and I'm really hoping that all of you get this reference, if you're under 30, you probably won't. <laughs> and if you were brought up in another country, like my friend Tessie, she was like, no, don't know that. <laughs> then you won't, but I'm hoping you will, and I hope you'll join in, because this is what I would like you to do when you have your next graded lesson observation.